Items. Thomas here with Much Props, gonna give you another how-to video. Today I am building, once again, something from nostalgia. As a child growing up in the 80s and 90s, I um, really loved animated series and really was blown away at the time by a movie called Who Framed Roger Rabbit. It was released in 1988. The movie is set in 1947 in old Hollywood, but there are tunes that live amongst them. So I thought it would be super cool to make a prop from there. And I've had several people suggest I make the tune gun from that movie. If you're not familiar, there's a scene where a detective pulls out a gun that is a cartoon gun with cartoon animated bullets. And he, he does a whole shooting scene. Um, it's not on the screen for very long, but I wanted to try and make that gun and to make it even more difficult on myself, I thought, why not make the bullets and the box that it goes in? Because it kind of comes out in a set when he pulls it out. So I thought, why not try and tackle that? So in this build, I am going to be foam crafting, woodworking, 3D printing, and model painting. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be a lot. Today we are building the Toon Gun from Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Let's get to building. Like I said in the beginning, this is gonna be a long video with lots of parts, literally double the clips of normal videos. I start with the gun. I found an image of him holding the gun to get the general size reference, which seemed a little larger than a normal revolver. Since my hands are ginormous, it ends up being a little bit bigger than it needed to be. I start by doing a simple sketch of the gun to make up my pattern. My templates are always free and linked in the description under the videos in PDF form. After figuring out the basic shape of the gun, I decided that I would 3D print the bullets. I found a file on Thingiverse that I liked and will link in the description of the video. It's by an artist named Daz21. I loaded it onto my Anycubic Photon S-Series resin printer and started that 5 hour print while I started building the gun out of foam. With all my pieces in hand, I could start cutting out the parts. I trace them onto various thicknesses of foam, the thinnest being 6mm and the thickest being 24mm. If you don't have access to certain materials or thicknesses, you can definitely try other materials. This would be an easy one to knock out with maybe cardboard or clay or random plastic bits. For the thicker foam, I carve off chunks and smooth out the edges later instead of trying to cut on a curve with a blade with that thick material it just ends up being uneven. Thank you. 
I round over most of the edges with a sanding drum, then come back over them again with a stone bit on my rotary tool to smooth over all the rough marks. Make sure to wear a respirator and work in a well-ventilated area while sanding or burning foam. You don't want the particles or fumes in your lungs. Now that the revolver grips are sanded, I need to burn in the little checker pattern on them with a wood burner. Be careful while using a wood burner because it does get extremely hot. I've got lots of scars on my hands from where my fingers slipped onto the hot end. You could put it down on the surface and use a ruler to make it straight. With hundreds of hours of experience, I feel pretty comfortable using the tool and I want to give you a good angle so you can see what I'm doing. Time to assemble the cylinder and barrel of my revolver. I didn't have the size dowel that I needed for the barrel, so I added 6mm to the outside of a 24mm dowel to get it relatively close. The cylinder needs the little groove details on them, so I cut them out and put them over a chunk of 48mm EVA dowel. Contact cement both parts and the dowels, wait for them to no longer be wet to the touch, then stick them together. I ended up making another cylinder because my first one was just a little bit too small. Instead of 6mm, I went with 10mm. This makes it 8mm thicker than my first one, which will fit my handle and grip a lot better. I bore out some holes for the chambers where the bullets will go into both the front and the back. This will not be functional, nor will the bullets fit in them, but I am working with real materials to build a real prop and don't have the crazy cartoon second by second size changing animation abilities. With all the main bits sanded and contact cemented, the gun is ready to be assembled. It's a very simplified version of a revolver with a lot of details missing from the actual thing. While yes, the actor in the film does hold a dummy gun while recording, a majority of this weapon is animated over the top of while on scene. Another funny fact, I'm pretty much done with the gun build at this point and my bullets still have another three and a half hours to print. Guess I'll twiddle my thumbs while I wait for them to finish printing.
After a little over five hours, my prints are ready to get off the machine. I glove up because I don't want nasty sticky resin all over my hands, and I remove it from the plate. I got a flex plate for my 3D printer from a third party seller, and really love how it is easy to remove this stuff from the build plate. I pull off most of the supports and rinse off the resin in some 99% isopropyl alcohol on the finishing station for about six minutes. Now that all the excess resin has been removed, I switch the machine over to UV curing, put on the rotating disc, and precariously place my bullets in a circle around the center. These get about six minutes of cure time standing up, and another six minutes or so sitting on their side so the bottom cures. You can get these resin printers for fairly cheap nowadays, and they will save you some time. You could also make these bullets out of foam or hand sculpt them and cast them if you had time. For me, to be able to do this entire build in a week I just didn't have enough time so it made sense to use a machine where I could. I did end up having to sand patches in areas that messed up to fix them so that it took a couple extra hours. Plasti dip on the foam and black spray paint on the prints as my primer. Trying to save some more time, I went out to the hobby store and bought this wooden box that I thought was big enough for the build. When I got home and placed my parts in the box, I realized I didn't have enough space to fit everything in. So I did a quick little diagram on a sheet of paper to figure out the sizes that I need. Went to a free website called makercase.com, I'll make sure and put the links in the description below, and put together a plan in an SVG format that my Glowforge could cut out. I only had 8th inch plywood on hand and I knew that that probably wasn't going to be sturdy enough for my box. So my inner box was a finger jointed assembly so that it increases the surface area for my wood glue connections. I then cut a slightly bigger box that would glue to the outside of the first box on the edges. I also staggered the rim where the top and the bottom meet for the second box so that it had a little lip to catch so you shut the box. I don't need a lot of clamping force on this thin wood so painter's tape should do just fine.
After a nice sand up to 220 grit sandpaper, this box is ready for some details. From what I can see in the quick second or so that it shows the top of the box in the movie, there are some little metal gold screws on the top and a lock on the front. Instead of searching for these things to try and find one that's close to it, I figured I could just burn and sand it in. I put a stone bit on my rotary tool that had a concave top, then plunged it to make the screw heads and burned a line across it to make the flat head of the screw. I very carefully burnt in the lock outer circle and drilled out the keyhole with a drill bit. Alright, before you woodworkers roll your eyes at me when you see what I am using, I did not have any wood stain on hand and I knew I could use leather dyes as a substitute. I mean, really, you can use a lot of different solutions to stain wood, even Kool-Aid. While yes, they are not made for this application, they work in a pinch. I had some brandy-colored Angelus dye that I thought would be close enough to the color that I see on screen and just rubbed it on. When I was done, I hit it with a clear coat and painted the fake metal bits with a gold paint pen. The spray varnish I used ran out after about a third of the way spraying and I had to improvise yet again. I tested out what Mod Podge would look like on a scrap piece of wood and found that it was quite shiny, so yes, this is a Mod Podge sheen you see. I drew up and cut out a series of stencils for the Valiant logo that goes on the front cover. After positioning it to the relative center, I dabbed on some black paint. When it dried, I added on the next layer to the stencils and gold and white and finished off the night with a lance detail on the top with a sharpie. I told you this was a lot for one build. The inside of the box has cut out velvet lined cushions for the gun and the bullets to sit in. So I glue up the thickness I need for it to sit in the right area with three layers of cheap 10 millimeter floor mat foam and six millimeter foam for the bottom. I trace out the weapon and the box for the bullets to sit in and cut them out. This will all get covered with that fabric you see there so it doesn't really have to look pretty. I didn't find any velvet fabric at the craft store and saw this marked down $2 remnant scrap piece, so uh, I figured I'd go with it. It's stretchy, so I think it'll work. This is another area that I strayed away from the screen design. The fabric is glued on in multiple pieces in the movie. You can see the 
like separation of the glue and I didn't really like that so instead I decided to make it all one piece I knew that that would mean there'd be wrinkles on the top which I was okay with I hot glued the fabric onto the bottom and then stretching the fabric over the sides I slowly worked my way around gluing all the flat surfaces on including the cutouts the top band the bullet box lid cover and this little concave tray that I made for the bullets to rest in. On the inside of the lid for this box, there is an engraved placard that reveals the gun was gifted to the Detective Valiant from none other than Yosemite Sam. I love that little detail. I just cut and engraved this on an acrylic sheet with my laser cutter, spray painted it gold, and now I need to dirty up the recesses so that the letters stand out a little more. I started with a paint pen and switched over to just plain acrylics because it wasn't working good enough. The foam gun was fairly easy and straightforward. I mixed a few colors to match it as close as I could to photos that I found from Prop Store when they sold an actual movie prop of the gun and the box and the bullets. The paint job from the actual prop was flat colors, which makes sense since they animated over the top of it to make it more cartoony. It took two or three coats of each color to get a solid coverage, probably because I painted it black instead of a light color so that I didn't have to paint so many, but it is what it is and it's done. So. Uh, yeah. The last thing that I tackled was painting the bullets. I am not a huge fan of painting really small stuff, so I knew it would be a challenge for me. My hat's off to all of those miniature painters out there. I don't know how y'all do it. My hands are a little too big and unsteady to get clean lines easily. I know I need a lot more practice with miniature stuff. I use my paint bottles as holders by just adding some folded over painters tape to the top of them and sticking them down. Then I spent the next several hours hand painting on all these tiny little details with the props inches from my face so I could see and these bullets are comical. And we are finished. Here is the end result. 
I know this is gonna be kind of weird to say, but I kind of like the box more than anything on this build. Um, it is a very nice looking box. I'm very proud of it, building it from just some pieces of wood uh, and having to make adjustments on the fly. But I think it kind of pulls together very nicely, all the little details. Now, I realize that mine is not super accurate to the screen, but none of the things that I really make on here are. Um, I did look extensively at pictures of the prop online as I was making it, and ones from the actual movie were on Prop Store, so I got a bunch of good up-close shots, and some of the bits were not so well polished, and that's because it only shows for a couple of seconds in the movie, and sometimes prop makers in those situations just have to kick something out real quick, and it just has to be good from a glance. And a lot of this stuff gets animated over the top, like the gun gets a nice little non-metallic metallic paint job, as well as the animation of the bullets in there, so it didn't have to be perfect. And I thought I made mine relatively nice, and I liked the little extra details that are on there that I just kind of improvised, like the lock and the screws and the little stencil on the top, and I messed up with the varnish and ended up using Mod Podge, of all things, to get that nice shine on the wood and not having actual wood stain and using leather stain instead. Um, you can definitely make do with what you got. So maybe you will try and make one of these and impress your friends with your ability to make something from a movie that you watch in your childhood and it uh, turns out pretty awesome. You gotta watch the movie. Maybe you'll get some. Yay! And inevitably they're gonna ask you, how'd you make that? You can give them one of these, tell them much props. Um, freeze. If you enjoy what I do here on YouTube and want to see more builds like this one, please consider joining these awesome people listed here with me over on my Patreon to build a bigger, better, more creative community together.